Good evening, everybody. How's everybody doing? Good, good show so far, everybody. Yep. Yeah? All right. So uh, we are here to present uh, cloud migration framework for OpenStack. Uh, I'm Sri Ram. This is uh, David Peraza. That's Aditya Tate. Uh, I just want to take a, a minute of your time to talk to you about Persistent. We are a powerhouse of uh, software development. We've been around for 24 years. Uh, we've been contributing to the OpenStack uh, community since the Bizarre Cactus days. And uh, we, s we are very excited about the amount of uh, workloads that are moving to uh, OpenStack and we'd like to grease the skids to get more of your workloads on to the OpenStack platform as quickly as possible. And uh, David and Aditya are going to walk you through what we've done so far. And uh, we'll wrap it up and have some questions uh, that you, we'll answer questions that you have. David? Thank you, Chiram. Um, so I'm David. All right, so these are the things that we're going to discuss today, right? So we're going to go through um, some of the drivers, challenges, and complexities that um, migration has. Um, I have to say, this is not the normal, you know, migration within a cloud where you you know get a host for maintenance and you migrate the vm to you know take the host down that's not the migration we're talking about we're talking about onboarding migrating um virtual machines or physical uh servers into a cloud environment okay so that's what cloud jump does and uh, we're gonna talk to you about cloud jump in the context of in a generic context but then we're gonna bring it down to you know how it works in the context of OpenStack, and you know migration services that uh, we can um, actually provide with this tool, right? So, um, what are the main drivers? I mean, why do people need this um, migration? Well, it's a simple pain point from our customers. It's a simple pain point from from your customers. Um, you know, I, I, I hear all all about these uh, great clouds, but I have current workloads and I have current hardware. You know, what about my investment, my current investment on, on, on infrastructure? How does that work, how does that play here? So, this is, a, um, you know, one of the main drivers we have. Uh, we also have agility, you know, the, the ability to do hybrid models. You know, sometimes you wanna, make, you, you wanna start private, and then all of a sudden you wanna move that workload into a, a public cloud environment, right? The whole um, value proposition of, of hybrid um, cloud environments. Um, so you don't want to, um, you know, if you have a lot of on-premise uh, workloads and, um, you know, all of a sudden you, ha you see that some of these workloads are not, you know, sick, they don't have to follow some compliance and, you know, it's easy to migrate off, you use this tool. Um, one of the main things also is, you know, the vendor lock-in. You know, you've been hearing throughout the conference, right? So this is one of the, va the value propositions of OpenStack is, you know, OpenStack, is you know an operating system. It's a framework. It allows anything to play here, right? So you can have hypervisors, you know, from Microsoft Hyper-V. You can have VMware, uh, vCenter, or you can have you know all the open source, you know, KVMs and right. And you know the the, the whole value proposition is you, you don't have to be locked into a specific hypervisor vendor or a specific network provider, right? Or a specific switch vendor, right? You have multiple options. So um, one of the things is for you to give you those options, you know, one of the first things that come on is you have to migrate you know, from your existing uh, workloads into um, uh, your current cloud. But not only that, what if you move to another cloud, you know, another cloud provider later on? You might as well just move that VM as well. So this also helps you with that, right? So the pay-as-you-go model and um, you know, you, you have two two choices. You either build from scratch or you migrate. And then migration is what we're going to propose here. So what are the complexities, right? So you have physical environments, um, you know, capturing that. Uh, you know, thankfully there's, there's already off-the-shelf tools um, from Red Hat and others that we can use for to do that. Um, so, and, you know, the other things is not only the virtual machines, but what are the network topologies around it, and you know the storage that is attached to that uh, virtual machine, that's something also you want to migrate. Um, so it's not, it's not only that this image that we move, we move all the metadata around that, right? So, the, the, you know, it's a complex end-to-end -end of a migration. You know, it usually takes, um, 
even more than one people or one person, you know, a lot of time to bring everything together, right? So do the capture in the, in the source, bring, bring the image into the next one. So deploy it using the, the target, um, the, the, um, the target cloud uh, tools, then come in and, you know, add the, the new configuration which matches what you used to have, right? So that's part of the complexity to do. And then the minute you do um, push button, um, you know, it's, it's, it's really, uh, uh, there's a lot of things going under the hood. So Ajit is gonna take you through what's going under the hood and then you'll, you'll see all the complexities that come with that. So here's, um, you know, the life cycle, right? So what happens is you have an existing uh, shop where you have, you know, VMware, maybe Microsoft, and maybe you even have OpenStack private there, right? So we have a tool that actually uh, does inventory, it collects all the metadata about that, and then it brings that information to a cloud uh, migration engine. The cloud migration engine uh, enables, um, the get all this metadata and then creates templates. You see how that works. And then, you know, with those templates and the actual raw material, the actual images or disk images, then you can play a, uh, a whole, the, you can replay the whole um, environment in, on premise into a cloud, right? So how it works. So it's, it's, a, pre, it's a per VM um, tool, right? So you do this for every VM, you have to do, you, you have to migrate it. Um, now, the, like I said, there's a discovery and there's also agents. So we can deploy this as a virtual appliance, right, in, in your cloud. So, but there's agents that are in charge of the um, um, customer data center, and there's agents that are in charge of the cloud, the target environment, right? And then they all have their own functionality. One speaks, you know, the API of the cloud. The other one speaks, um, you know, current current um, libraries, you know, like libvirt or ESX in that on-premise environment. Um, so the engine, like I said, collects the information, creates the um, templates, and moves it. So um, what are the, te the steps, right? So you have to capture at some point. It's not, you don't have to do it in a sequence. You, have to, you can capture, I mean the engine, what it's doing, you can capture and then um, you know, create the, you can, you can create um, assets in the, in the, in the a public cloud, capture and then eventually what you need to do is to enable those uh, virtual machines in the new environment. Um, you, you need the, the whole, you know, forklifting. He's going to explain that uh, in a moment. Uh, but I want to give you a preview here to transport all the resources and all the actual bits, right, into uh, a source VM. But you also have certain uh, um, capabilities you can add here, which is not only you can move the virtual machines, but you can, uh, let's say you want to add a new monitoring um, application on top of that. You have an adjust, you have a, an opportunity here to add to that to those VMs using these tools. So you can add, um, you know, let's say a, a new Apache um, um, API with, you know that allows you to um, come in, right? So or you have um, you know a new monitoring, like I mentioned, new login, you know, more events that you want to collect. This is a good opportunity to do that. All right. So with this, I'm gonna let Ajita take you through uh, the fun part, which is the actual tooling and what it does, okay? Thanks, David. Um, hello, everyone. So customers today uh, want to migrate their workloads and migration and you know upgrades are a great topic uh, in this conference. So customers want to migrate, but they're just not happy with, uh, they don't want to stop at migration. They want to see what uh, tools offer after you know migrating workloads. So traditional uh, approaches of migration, you know, just captured workloads, captured VMs, moved them onto the target cloud, but that was it. Then they relied on DevOps mechanisms to you know go and adjust to see uh, if the workloads were compliant, if if they were running as they were on premise. So customers want more than uh, mere transport uh, and forklift of VMs. So the framework that we're going to talk about, you know, allows a has a capability of actually plugging in custom recipes to, you know, do adjustments, adapt to how you want the workloads to adapt in in the target setting. So 
a typical migration uh, is characterized by you know capture uh, on premise vms transporting of those into your target cloud and you know adjusting them onto target cloud so we're going to talk about the technology that we've built here at persistent uh, it's called cloud jump uh, we typically uh, uh, don't want to offer this as a self service portal uh, primarily because we think that migration is not as easy as it sounds migration is kind of a complex task and it's very important for a migration engineer or a domain expert to help the customer uh, understand what needs to be migrated how it needs to be migrated uh, and what is the baggage associated with your migration uh, in terms of attached networks and storage so we offer a self service gui uh, we offer customer portals and a system admin portal um, for, to facilitate the migration. Um, our, our migration engine is based on workflows. Uh, as, as we saw, uh, a migration is a complex end-to-end -end workflow. But we want to try and break this entire workflow into smaller, sizable, easy-to-execute chunks, uh, which, uh, which are pretty much orchestrated using our workflow engine. Um, we introduce a new notion of migration using certain templates. So our migration engine has the capability of ingesting some metadata, creating templates on the fly, and executing those in order to facilitate your migration. Our entire uh, stack has agents, uh, which are basically orchestration agents, which sit on-premise as well as on the cloud to do its respective functions, which are pretty much uh, very, very lightweight in nature, based on REST APIs. We're going to talk about the multiple cloud migration scenarios, uh, which are relevant to OpenStack. Uh, we also want to talk about how we can facilitate you know, multiple migrations from a single portal. Uh, we can have a con a concurrency uh, enabled there. The entire stack that we've built is you know, based on all the industry standards, primarily open source. We have REST-based APIs. Uh, we use uh, libvirt you know, to do the underlying uh, system calls. We use Apache LibCloud for doing some intercloud mechanism, uh, and our, our stack is based on you know Python libraries. And in the end, you know we talk about the fun part, which is actually integration uh, with Amazon CloudFormation and OpenStack Heat. <clears throat> so, what are the cloud migration combinations that uh, you know are, are relevant to the OpenStack and AWS space? So, we know that AWS is you know probably a undisputed leader in the public space, and OpenStack is is getting there in in the private space. So it becomes a very very natural a model for you know customers to have the best of both the worlds. And in the context of a hybrid hybrid scenario, uh, customers who are using OpenStack, you know, they probably want to move to AWS. So we capture that as one of the potential combination. We also facilitate you know the movement uh, of vanilla KVM environments and ESX environments onto OpenStack private environments. So I've been speaking to customers and people here at the conference who are very interested in understanding how to move from you know plain vanilla via ESX environments onto OpenStack. We also talk about moving workloads from an OpenStack private environment to another OpenStack private environment, maybe across versions or maybe across multiple zones within the same data center. Uh, the interesting use case that we are currently working on uh, is, is moving from an OpenStack private environment to uh, OpenStack public. So we are, we are looking at Rackspace as a potential uh, use case here. That's WIP stands for work in progress. And, and the fun part uh, which I've uh, encountered over the last uh, few days while talking to people is they want to understand how they can move uh, workloads from AWS back into OpenStack. You know, after uh, the workloads re uh, reach a certain level of maturity in AWS, uh, how do they bring them back? So that is something that we're exploring at this point in time as well. <clears throat> so shaping the target deployment. Customers uh, who want to move on to you know, target environments uh, via migration, may or may not uh, envision how their target, in, uh, target deployment should look like. So for example, you have uh, a customer, uh, or you have an environment you, which has typically, say, 50 to 100 VMs. It's a fairly mid-sized uh, deployment. It is very important to understand how you want this particular on-premise environment to look in the cloud. Because you have virtual machines, you may have physical machines, you have attached volumes and networks. And it is very important for people to understand how to derive a map of replicating or cloning your existing on-premise infrastructure onto a target cloud, like AWS or maybe even OpenStack. 
And here we look at typical uh, intricacies of IP addresses, virtual networks, subnets, routers, and firewalls. It's very important for them to understand how they can configure and uh, recreate all of those onto the target platform. So at times, I, when I've, I've been speaking to many customers, they don't really envision or they don't really know uh, what, what they want or how they want their environment to be set up uh, on the target cloud. And this is where the role of the migration engineer comes into picture, who is the domain expert. So let's talk about uh, one of the use cases, which is OpenStack to AWS migration. So we've all uh, you know, uh, learned about, heard about AWS cloud formation, uh, OpenStack Heat. Uh, and we've seen people you know, leverage all of those in, in typical orchestration, creating environments, uh, you know, doing software configurations. We saw, we heard uh, Steve Baker talk about uh, how you can do software configuration using Heat yesterday. So what we are trying to introduce a new perspective here by saying that, you know what, let's try and leverage cloud formation for doing cloud migration. So the way we do it is, if you want to, say, move two of your virtual machines into a target cloud, at design time, our tool allows you to actually pre-create your stack, your target stack, from our console rather than going to the Amazon console and, cre and, and creating the stack there and associating your forklifted VMs to that stack. So what we do is we have uh, the metadata that we you know, import into our uh, migration engine, which creates these cloud formation templates on the fly and executes those templates at the hit of the migrate button. So the workflow is pretty much characterized by creating a stack and then capturing your uh, source VMs, forklifting them into the stack that you've already created. This actually makes your migration uh, very less complex uh, and very, very seamless. So, so in this particular use case, we're looking at two VMs that you want to migrate using a template that we've created. And the template actually creates the stack that you see here. So the stack is pretty much straightforward. You have a single subnet within a virtual private cloud on Amazon which is sitting in the US East region. So once the stack is created, the VMs are ready to be forklifted. And all of this can be done using a single touch, using a simple push button approach. So here I'm going to you know, introduce you to the tool. So migration is characterized as a three-step process. It's basically importing your VM metadata of your source, source VMs uh, who are potential cloud candidates. So in, in this particular UI, you see that you, know, you can import your uh, cloud candidates by either uh, connecting the tool to an inventory analysis database who can fetch uh, and who can basically analyze what the, uh, who the cloud candidates are. So you can fetch that metadata um, by hitting the import VM button on the top left. Additionally, you can also add um, your um, better data manually by hitting the add button on the, on the bottom. So for example, if, if the uh, system admin just gives you uh, an Excel sheet, you can just go and add your uh, VM data there. Then we, we, we talk about configuration. So what is configuration in the context of migration? You basically need to point your source VM. You, you, you basically need to tell your source VM where it is going to go to. So we are talking of, say, Amazon AWS as a target cloud. Uh, the zone would be a Northern, Ca Northern California within uh, EC2. And what kind of flavor the VM needs to take once it moves onto the cloud. So these are the typical mandatory parameters that are required to initiate a basic migration. And here you see that uh, there is a stack associated with the particular um, migration. So the stack is something that we create at design time even before we schedule the migration. So if you do not create a stack, the, the particular migration will have a default stack, which basically is forklifting your VM into Amazon with its default properties that Amazon provides. So for example, if you move this with a default stack, the particular VM that will be forklifted into Amazon will have a public IP address exposed over the internet. But if you want to have your VMs or your set of VMs or your applications in a specific network topology with specific firewall security groups, you can pre-create uh, that entire network topology at design time within, uh, using this tool. So for that, you may have to go to the AWS Stack Plus button on top and, and try and create a stack. So here you can see. So, so the basic uh, underlying assumption here is that you as a customer, you are having an AWS account and you can validate, uh, you can basically add your keys in the account details button out there in the, in the rightmost tab. So here we are talking about creating a stack. Uh, basically, we want to, in, in this particular use case, we're going to talk about creating one virtual private cloud within Amazon, creating two subnets, and trying to move a VM into these two subnets. 
So we add all the requ uh, requisite parameters required for creating a stack, which is basically the VPC name, the SIDR, uh, the internet gateway name. And as you see here, once, once the stack is created, we actually create a blueprint of what your target topology can look like at design time itself. So the migration engineer, along with the customer, can actually validate this by creating VPCs, subnets, and any resources that can be created using these templates. And once this particular uh, blueprint is validated, it can be saved as a template within the migration engine. You can also edit a particular uh, VM template, uh, uh, migration template that you've created. You can assign different stacks to it. You can assign different IP addresses and so on. So once you, once you configure this, it's, uh, your VM is typically you know, ready to be migrated. So what you need to do next is you need to go to the Migrate tab and, associate, and, and, and here you can see the particular VM that we are trying to migrate is associated to a specific stack that was configured in the, in the previous step. So every VM can be associated to a stack. So there's multiple relationships there. So we are offering a push button technology here to actually you know, import, configure, and migrate from the same console, wherein you can do intercloud um, you know, stack creations, intercloud um, migrations. The migration output here you see is, is basically a color-coded legend which talks about all the different individual steps but, uh, that, that, that are characterized by the migration. A migration, like we said, is a, is a complex process. So we are trying to break down uh, what each of them looks like. So it basically starts you know, uh, by connecting to the host, your source host, trying to you know, capture it, uh, copying it to a, a local depot within your source environment from where it can be forklifted for, for some obvious reasons. And then you, know, you can create a stack and then finally import the VM into that stack. So we know that migration is a very, very complex process, and it's very important for the migration engineer to know uh, why things are failing, if they are failing anywhere. So we've also provided a, uh, a framework to you know, show the logs and, and debug these logs whenever there is a failure. So what actually happens under the hood? So we have this portal that we saw, which basically allows you to import data, configure VMs, and, and create stacks. So what exactly happens? So we are basically, you know, creating metadata, ingesting them into the workflow engine, and asking the workflow engine to create these templates on the fly and execute them. So if you look at uh, the migration of OpenStack to AWS, basically we are you know, creating cloud formation templates on the go and creating these stacks and then you know, using our migration templates to actually forklift your source VMs into the stack that we've created using cloud formation. So we did this for cloud formation and Amazon, and we realized that, you know what, this is working, and this is excellent, and this is very useful in the context of migration. So why not do something similar for OpenStack? And then we explored uh, doing the same using Heat. So we've seen the different use cases of Heat uh, yesterday. And this is one use case that we want to talk about in the context of migration. So everything is pretty much standard, ex except the fact that we are you know, using Heat templates and Heat orchestration to actually do, uh, facilitate the creation of stacks and migration. So what does the heat template look like and what does the orchestration look like in the context of the migration? So you have a heat template here, which is basically a hot uh, heat orchestration template, hot template. And you can see here that we are actually instructing, so the user is actually instructing the migration engine to create a network called new network and to create multiple subnets within that network. So basically what this means is that the customer wants to move his two VMs into these two subnets that, that can be pre-created uh, using the tool. So how, how does this work? So you can extract these uh, inputs, which is basically the metadata, uh, and the heat client can you know, call the heat APIs by passing this YAML file. And the heat API you know, ultimately talks to your Neutron, Nova, or Cinder to do the actual orchestration. So let's talk about a use case uh, with respect to OpenStack now, where the OpenStack is a, is a target cloud. So we are talking of uh, moving a a vanilla KVM or a ESX environment onto OpenStack. So what do we do? So CloudJump is our tool, which is typically de deployed in, in the source environment. Um, so you have uh, raw images based on KVM, and you have VMDKs, which are running on the ESX infrastructure. So CloudJump uh, is ingested with the metadata, the, uh, the source VM metadata, and it basically goes and captures those. But uh, we are also talking of stack creation. In order to create new stacks on OpenStack private environments, you need to uh, talk to Keystone on the, on the target platform, uh, authenticate with the tokens, and, basi and basically get 
a handle of all the other components, that is heat, nova, and neutron, and glance. And the way we orchestrate is, is, is by creating this network stack that you see on the right hand side, which is similar to the one that we saw in the previous slides, and then use our Glance APIs to copy or forklift the images into the Glance uh, repository, and then use Heat to actually boot that VM from the Glance repository into the stack that we've created. Here we talk about moving from an OpenStack private environment to another private environment. So if you see clearly, the left hand side is what changes. The right hand side is pretty much the same. In this case, you have an OpenStack environment in your on-premise data center. The, the left hand side changes in the context of you don't have a vCenter or, or a KVM VM manager to, to deal with. You have your plain Nova, Glance, and Keystone to interact with. In order to you know first create, uh, in order to first connect to your uh, on-premise system, you need to authenticate with Keystone on your on-premise, and then get handle over Nova and Glance to basically do the forklift onto your target. Again, here we are using Keystone on the target to ensure that we are able to do the orchestration on your target cloud. And this is uh, what we are exploring uh, at this point in time. Uh, we know how to do this. We've actually done a part of this. So what we are doing is we are migrating our OpenStack uh, on-premise uh, workloads into Rackspace. So we are using leveraging Pyrax APIs to do this. So Pyrax basically you know, exposes um, uh, APIs to forklift VMs into the Rackspace cloud file, which is basically an object storage. And then, so, so what happens after you move it into the, uh, into the cloud file? You have to register your particular image in the image store, and only then you can boot from that particular image store into uh, uh, into Nova. So all of the, so the part on top has been automated, and now what we're looking for is some kind of support from Rackspace to understand how Heat is you know actually uh, used in Rackspace and what kind of support do they have for orchestration. So once we uh, understand this, it'll be it'll, it's going to be very easier for us to actually integrate this part into our tool to facilitate uh, a one-touch uh, migration to Rackspace, just like we've seen for AWS. So we've so we've been able to you know uh, cover ground so far, and the next thing we thought about was what can we do? What what else can we do? What's next? So what we've done is we've actually integrated our Cloud Jump uh, tool into Horizon. So this is what we see. You see a Cloud Migration tab on the bottom left, which basically shows our uh, Cloud Jump uh, user interface. We've we've done all the styling. We've integrated the tool using the Python Django, and. Our, our next step is to actually try and f facilitate the migration of workloads from the UI itself. And there are multiple ways in which we, it can be done. So as a community member, I'd, I'd like to ask you know, if such a service is going to be vital. Um, we know it is vital, but uh, how can we incubate a migration as a service with an open stack? So it, it has to be either done using a, uh, basically using another project within the community. Or we can, uh, as persistent, we can have a patch uh, as an add-on um, utility to work with the uh, Horizon setup. So we also have um, uh, designed certain wireframes and certain uh, ways in which we can you know, actually facilitate the migration. So here you see the complex workflow is actually broken down into su sub-steps, and this is what we are planning to do uh, in Horizon now. So, so Sriram is going to talk about next steps. Sorry. All right, so um, uh, we went through um, a lot of stuff. I know it's a little bit, we are here to answer questions. Uh, you may have noticed that um, Aditya used AWS as the starting point, and we didn't mean to end up here, but just that uh, we started with AWS, we saw that the OpenStack uh, community code base and infrastructure is similar to what we found in the AWS space, and we were able to replicate that with ease. That kind of shows the maturity of what the community has achieved so far. And now as to the next steps, what we, want, what we are thinking about doing is uh, fleshing out the rest of the work in progress pieces that uh, we have, uh, bringing AWS to uh, OpenStack and uh, the other uh, work in progress thing. Uh, we also would like to improve the velocity in terms of uh, how quickly we can move the things uh, back and forth. And that actually is an important aspect of the freedom that OpenStack provides, that not only are you not locked into a particular uh, 
environment or a solution for a long time, you're also able to move quickly. So uh, it's easy to say you're not locked in, but it takes you two years to migrate out of it. That's kind of saying you cannot migrate out of uh, the current solution. Uh, so we want to increase the velocity. We want to increase the, uh, the ability to move friction-free in a multi-cloud environment. And they're also uh, looking at migration as a service that Aditya was mentioning. Uh, is it a part of something that uh, should be a first class citizen within OpenStack itself? What would that look like? We would really like to participate and uh, shape that discussion as well. Uh, thank you, and if you have any questions, please step up to the mic. So um, all this was um, very interesting. Is this on? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, but uh, in, in terms of being able to use migration, you might uh, need to predict what the migration overhead is going to be. Um, I, I think this was out of scope for what you were trying to do, but there's all sorts of migration policies that you might want to use to you know, manage what gets migrated when. So um, being able to have a, a, uh, an accurate model of what the migration overhead is going to be uh, is going to be necessary for uh, building uh, a variety of number of different migration policies. So have you looked at being able to predict what the migration overhead is going to be and could you use your templates to, um, to help make those predictions because in terms of the you know, memory footprint, you know, number of open connections, uh, attached storage, you know, all those things that you mentioned, those things would affect what the overhead would be. Yes, uh, we, the uh, assessment tool that uh, we went through that captures the metadata from mm -hmm. the performance metrics, mm -hmm. uh, that actually passes the metadata of the performance metrics of each of your workloads, and that goes into the sizing decisions that we can make. Um, the, yes, we can do that. It's not directly exposed right now, the, the, uh, the ability to project the overheads in the, uh, in the uh, target that uh, template, but it can be very easily made available. Yeah, I mean, this actually sounds like a, a great suggestion, actually, right? <laughs> so instead of a question, it looks like you're, you're feeding back to us. You know, it would be nice, yes. Yeah, well, to I have, mean, yeah. All, all, the, all the mechanics that you described are certainly, you know, the, the first things that you have to do, but in exactly. terms of being able to manage, you know, capacity, new capacity planning and, and all that kind of stuff, you need to yeah. have some sort of automatic uh, yeah, and, policy and, that you enforce. And the, po the policy sounds to me like a, a, a more encompassing abstraction than just, um, you know, a template for a VM or a couple of VMs, right? So yeah. some people might want to say, I want to migrate, you know, this whole chunk of the cloud, right? Which is usually, I mean, in our experience, you know, the, um, with our customers, usually it's, it's good to have, you know, a one-by-one -one migration. So, you know, it's, it's gradual. It's not something that, right. you know, right. you could still work in your current environment. We're going to migrate this VM and then this other VM. And then you can have a plan and a timeline, right? Yeah. Like the same, the same you do any other project. Yeah, but yeah. For, good, for large good, enterprise, you. You'll a good suggestion. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it, it'll be it'll be super cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you said you're going to do the object store migration, like where you yes. capture the image and then migrate it to. The, what about the uh, uh, block storage, right? Yes. Or the volumes which are attached to the VM. Yep. Say, so what's the question though? So how do you migrate the? the the attached storage. Uh, the block storage. You want yeah. to take that? Actually, you want you want me to, you want me to answer? Okay. Okay. So so um, so obviously Cinder is involved, right? So and and the, you know the way it's happening now is because we're for example we get VMware and VMware you can have you know VMDK is pretty much you know not it's not the same model as um, Cinder block storage. So you just have you know another VMDK and that's your your extra volume, right? Right. Now we can easily move that um, from you know one um, target environment, one source environment to a target environment, and and then you know make this VMDK an extra um, volume. And so what we're thinking is what's going to happen is since we're going to target a lot of the Cinder to Cinder. Um, Cinder has a lot of drivers that is actually block storage, so which is not a file, right? So you can right. just move move um, a, a file like we do with VMDKs. Um, so what's going to happen is you're going to have to to have an intermediate, you know, dump of that data into some sort of a file that then we can move, right? So um, we're welcome to you know all the suggestions, anything that can quickly move, for example, from Cinder 
um, private to another private, right? Some sort of um, rapid connection. Right. We can, we're open to do that, right? So, but the, the initial thing, the initial idea is to just dump it into a file and then move it. That's the simplest thing to do right now. So, so uh, is it going to be an offline migration or is it a live migration wherein you're... It's not live, so it's off, completely offline. So, the, the, um, and this is an important point, I don't want people to get confused, all oh, these guys do live migration, you yeah. know. Uh, this is a completely new VM with a completely new domain, right? Right. So you're gonna have to, you know, if you have, if you have, um, um, you know, a domain name, you might need to change the IP in the domain name, and uh, things could continue to work. So it's not, it's not a, you know, life. Everything is working now. It's working exactly the same. I mean, that's a use case. That's another use case. It's a use case we're not targeting, and it's a use case that, you know, uh, works well when you do maintenance and other things like, um, you know. Also for disaster recovery, I mean, so as a host goes down for HA, right? Host goes down, the VMs can migrate quickly. Okay. That's our scenario. Right? Yep. Thanks for your questions. We are actually also, you know, uh, migrating block block volumes. It, it's the Swift that we're looking at also right now. Yeah. Uh, yes, I was wondering if you guys have benchmarked this against any other kind of migration strategies. For example, we just recently migrated a small pro project from one cloud to another. Um, it was just one server and then a hundred clients and we just glanced, we just took a snapshot, glanced them down to our managed network and glanced them back up to another one and had them up and running. We had it about, done about 35 minutes and so I was just wondering if how, how cool. would this help us in our, pro like how much time would this save us if we implemented yeah, it? Yeah, I mean, the, 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 time, the time that it, that it saves is not really on, I mean, I, again, we have one requirement that's imp improved velocity, right? So, which is part of, you know, um, the tweaking that we have to do to actually get, um, you know, better performance. But the time you're saving is tremendous just because of, you're not doing manual steps, just because of the automation part, right? So if you're doing it manually, it, it still takes time for you to move, you know, 10 gigabytes from one environment to another over a network, over any, any network, right? What we're saving is the human error. We're saving the actual human interaction that, you know, that has to come in and run the commands. So we're automating all that. And we're doing it, you know, I, I like the presentations just to them hit, right? Because it was pretty, it goes with what we're doing here. It's like you want to save things into a file. And then that file then is something that you can take and play anywhere, right? Um, and then, so uh, you, you, we haven't done any benchmarking in terms of performance. That's something that's coming, you know, next, just because we want to improve our current performance. But we've seen our customers, you know, increase their time to, to the cloud dramatically, you know, and from days to, you know, hours, right? Go ahead. Um, hi there, uh, excuse me. I'd I'll, I'll like to add a point. So uh, another important thing is that, you know, the, the forklifting time is something that is always a function of your network and, and the size of your VM, right? I mean, the size of your disk file that you're trying to forklift. So that is something that is always going to be constant for any migration strategy. But like you mentioned, you know, we are trying to eliminate and we are trying to reduce the, the manual intervention time and uh, the time that is actually created in validation and creation of your stack onto your target cloud, which can be actually done at design time using a easy to use uh, interface. Does that answer your question? Yeah. It does. Uh, suppose I have an uh, application deployed on uh, an OpenStack cloud uh, and the application consists of several compute nodes and backend services like uh, Trove database. So have you, uh, guys, are you guys also thinking of the uh, migrating the entire application from one, uh, one cloud to the other? Yes, absolutely. So um, basically, basically, an application is, uh, you know, characterized as a num as a collection of VMs. So all of them can be imported together in the in the in the import stage, and uh, you know they can just be forklifted uh, as as an image. So are you are you saying can be forklift an application itself? Yeah, I mean it 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 will consist of uh, database migration as well, right? Uh, the Trove database. Uh huh. Right. So we do get yeah, Trove is something that's on our roadmap to do. So if you have a Trove based uh, database, yes, we'll have to, uh, li just as we are syncing up to Glance to kind of launch the, uh, to copy the images, we'll use the Trove to move it from Trove to, I mean, OpenStack to OpenStack is easy. Yeah. But moving it from, say, Trove to RDS is going to be, uh, is, a, is a mapping that we have to do. Okay. Yeah. All right. 
All right. Thanks, everybody. Uh, Thank you. Have a good uh, rest of the show. Thank you.